Good morning, South Tacoma. What a mighty God we serve. I thank God for today. I thank God for our opportunity to, to be together yet again. And I'm praying that the things that God would do for you and I <laughs> will oh, outshine anything else. And we will recognize it for something great and marvelous in our life. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we just come and we ask, Lord, for this day. Lord, I, I really, really understand that this is a day that you've made. And, Lord, we are to rejoice and be glad. Lord, I don't want to take that for granted, Lord. I don't want it just to be something that is uh, uh, quoted out of Scripture. But I want it, Lord, is to be something that we are fulfilling every day. It is truly your day and lord we're going to live for you and lord i pray right now for the word of god i pray that lord we would bring oh the word of god lord to a, a place of uh, of life and lord let it be our livelihood let it be the thing that we embrace because it's something that is going to help us oh become closer to you lord i pray that you would forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness lord I pray, Lord, that the things that your people need, Lord, let there, be, let there be something that is revealed today that would help them, not only today, but embrace tomorrow. Lord, we love you and we say thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today is truly is a good day. And I want us to really embrace the word because the word of God helps us in our daily endeavors to do the will of God. And I'm telling you right now, the word of God is God and it's our relationship that we have at our disposal and I, I I tell you I'm truly embracing the fact or that old, old saying that we have that what you feed will grow and what your star will die I want you to feast upon the word and grow I want you to really cut off I want you to starve the things that will not be productive the, those things that it would be uh, uh, counterproductive cut it off and allow uh, oh god to fulfill it through his word those things that you and i need both and I'm, I'm telling you i we've been talking about where jesus is in our life and that's very important because where he is in our life will m uh, make all the difference in what our life represent in the life of those that know jesus as well as those that don't know Jesus. And I'm telling you right now, relationships are very key in our success in life. And in our scripture text in Philippians, Philippians 4, and I'm reading from verse 12, it says, I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. Paul is talking to the church again at, at, at Philippi and he's bringing understanding because again they wanted to help him they wanted to uh, to assist him and and listen Paul spent a lot of time incarcerated so uh, I mean it's one of those things where he had uh, people providing for him but Paul was, Paul was one that understood where Jesus was in the life he said I've learned learned the secrets of living in every situation whether it is full full with a full which with a full stomach or empty with plenty or little i mean i've had to live with an empty stomach as well as a full stomach i mean i've had to really create within your own right how to to survive in some cases but other cases thrive with what you have it's important to know the things that you have listen verse 13 said for i can do all things through christ who gives me strength and we've been focusing on knowing where christ is in your life is oh it brings strength it brings understanding it creates oh my goodness opportunity for you and i to succeed in life and as we've been focusing on 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 life with christ we've been focused on what that actually means i'm here to tell you we need to recognize the things that have been done to us through us for us <laughs> and as well as against us but listen I mean, you have christ in your life as paul did listen he said listen i i didn't have a need but because you were there listen he looked at all those uh, uh, uh realms he looked at all those focuses and i pray today as we focus on 
on where Jesus is in our life that we would focus on not only is, uh, listen he got there through you and I accepting him and there's others that are out there looking for him that have not accepted him and I'm telling you right now you and I have the ability to make a difference in somebody else's life because we understand and know where Jesus is now we talked a little bit about revealing and revelation on last week. And we said revelation is being a, a, being a surpri uh, surprising and previously unknown fact, especially one that is made known in a dramatic way. And, and I love that because Jesus' desire is for us, for you and I, to know him, to know where he's at, to help us in our uh, understanding and our endeavors for being what God has called us according to purpose and I tell you what Paul when Paul recognizes what he was doing before <laughs> in Acts 9 and then he recognized uh, oh the shift or he recognized that th th there was a Jesus and he was praising him all of a sudden the change took place and I want want us to 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 deal because we've been talking about where Jesus is I want to talk just a little bit this morning about who Jesus is and I want want to start with 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 what I call the WLT, the WLT, because I know you and I know, but how many folks don't know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life? And I I, I was I was messing around with that W W T L because uh, I was also thinking of it as where to look, Amen. <laughs> where to look? Where is Jesus? Where to look for him? But you guys know sometimes we're not looking for someone. <laughs> In most cases, because we don't know who they are or what they have to offer. And I, t I, I tell you, I was looking at the word way and I was thinking about way in this, in, 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 in the Bible way, when, it, when in that scripture where it says he's the truth, way, the truth, and the life, way is capitalized. In other words, way is a, rep uh, is a representation here of the method or the style or the manner of doing something. Or I you have to look at it from the standpoint that it's a course of action. And we need to know that when we talk about Jesus being the way, we need to understand that he's our process. He's our procedure. He's our technique. He's our system. He's all those things wrapped up in, in, in the way. You think, you think about it. When we look at anything that we have to do, in, we can look at it one or two ways. We look at a problem one or two ways. But when we really sat down, and understand that Jesus is the way, there's only one way to look at it, and that's the way of the cross or the way of Christ. So think about the way. He is our method. He is our style. He is our course of action. He is our methodology, and I like that. And then we go to tr the word truth. <laughs> truth. Truth is quality or a state of being true. It's that veracity. It's, it's that truthfulness. It's, it's, it's that sincerity. It's that candor. It's that honesty is that genuineness and most of all is the gospel truth you hear me the gospel truth and i <laughs> am so excited about the accuracy of the word and how the word become our accuracy it becomes how you and i look at the different things in life and we look at it from the standpoint is this accurate is this something that I can hold on to? Is this something that I, I believe? Again, Jesus desires for us to be in the know, but he wants us to trust and believe in the process. And then there's the, the word life. Oh, life or look or outlook. I mean, life is living the capacity of, of growth. It's, it's r the reproduction. It's the functionality of activity. It's, 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 it's constant. It's continual. It's, 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 it's that which precedes death. It's, it's, it's that that creates within us the thing that happens on a daily basis. Listen, you can really grasp where Jesus is. When you start to look at your life, are you a survivor? Are you surviving? You're thriving? Or you're living? He said that we should have life and life more abundantly. And I tell you, I want to live life and life more abundantly. But sometimes we have to get beyond the survival mode. Sometimes we have to get beyond the just, just we're, we're thriving, but we, we, we know there's another level. 
I want to live, and I want to live life more abundantly. In other words, I don't want to just exist. I want to. I want there to be an existence that with Christ. I want. I want to. I want to. Uh, want to really understand that there's a liveliness. There's 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 there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an understanding of life that Christ brings that <laughs> helps you and I become who He said we are. Listen, I've always said. Don't get so caught up in who you are that you forget who you have become. You become a child of the king. Any man being Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And I, I, I love that. I love that because I want to walk in the things of God through his son Jesus. And I was looking at John 14. Where Jesus here, he's, he, he, he understands where the disciples are and he wants them to be in the right place. He's, he's trying to really get them to focus on who he had become in their lives. He didn't want them just to, to exist around him or just to uh, be those that are, are, are laying around and enjoying uh, life, watching miracle after miracle take place. He didn't want them just to, to, to have this fictitious or this ideology that, hey, this is how life is going to be because Jesus knew one day he was going to leave and when he left, <laughs> the persecution would begin. He knew when he, I mean, it's somewhat like, like when we, uh, um, have given our life to Christ and all of a sudden we begin to live for Christ and everyone it seems like attacks us and, uh, and uh, against us. Why? Because all of a sudden a new way of life, a new man <laughs> has, has become the focus and anytime there's a new man listen, the old man is going to attack and sometimes the new man in you gets attacked by the old man in someone else. <laughs> Amen. And you got to recognize that for what it is. That's why the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And I'm telling you, sometimes we don't see that for what it is. But if we would grab a hold of Jesus and put him in the proper place. But again, I want to talk a little bit about how and what it means to take on who Jesus is. And Jesus was giving the disciples in John 14 and 1. He says, let your heart, let not your heart. Be troubled. My goodness. He said, let not your heart be troubled. In other words, he was addressing the heart and he understood what the heart represent and how the heart can be. Oh, though it's foundation, it could be something that is misread or misinterpreted. He says, you believe in God. <laughs> you believe in God. Believe also in me. He had this he had this concern and I, I just want to reiterate it. he had this concern to what they were actually believing and what what was in their hearts and what I mean come on he wanted to bring understanding to who he was because so many people was was misreading him mis, uh, oh my goodness being misled by others and uh, what others were saying I mean the Pharisees <laughs> was not accepting him and because they was not accepting him, they were teaching things that were contrary to who he was. But they, listen, I'm telling you, it's even happening today. There's so many people who are misinterpreting, oh, the word of God. They're taking the word of God out of context. They're putting things in, in perspective according to what works for them. Listen to me. That's why it's good to have your personal relationship with Christ. That's why he reveals himself to us individually. And he's requiring, <laughs> oh, he's requiring you and I to whom much is given, much is required. And God wants you, oh my goodness, to know his son Jesus. And here Jesus is, is, is talking, oh, this is revelation here. He's bringing revelation to them. He said, if, if you believe God, you have to believe also in me. He said, if you do, he says in verse 2, he's bringing understanding to what his relationship with the father is and what he knows. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. Look at the look at how he's re revealing his father. He's revealing the one God. Oh. <laughs> if it were not so, I would not have told you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. Mm. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. To who? Myself. That where I am, 
there you may be also. Now I want to look at I want to look at uh, three different points here in 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 the scripture. Starting with verse three, he says, "I go." At number one, he said, "I go." That's a, that's, a, that's pretty. I mean, think about this when we are looking at how Jesus has presented himself here and how he's 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 relating to the Father and the relationship that he and the Father have. What he is saying here, he says, he says, "I go." Number one. Then he says, "And prepare." Number two. A place for you. In other words, he says, not only, uh, not only am I spending time with you and bringing understanding to, to you as to who I am, but he says, I'm going to go, number one. He says, I'm going to prepare. So you can see that preparation is important. He says, and I think preparation is very important when you start looking at how you and I are going to receive something. But here he says, I go, number one, and number two, pre- prepare a place for you. Listen. When you understand where Jesus is or when you put Jesus in the right place, then watch this. The scripture says, I will come again. Look at that. Look at that. So he goes, he prepares. And number three, he comes again. Okay. In other words, he says, you might see me now, but he says, I'm going and I'm preparing and I'm coming back. Oh, listen, revelation is key. And we talked about that last week. The revealing of who God is through Jesus. It's, 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 it's vital. It's important. In other words, people pray to God. <laughs> but they won't accept Jesus. When he says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I come again and receive you. There's that, that word receive. Receive you to myself. He's not saying, he, he says, my goodness. He, he, well, he's our Savior. So he says, I'm going to go prepare and I'm going to come again and I'm going to receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we serve a God that is in a prepared, in a preparation for bringing us back to our original huh, form or to where he. Think about it. We, we talk about the garden a lot. We talk I mean, many preachers preach about the garden, but let me tell you something. That same garden that left is going to return again, but it's going to return again according to what we see and how we see Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Look at verse four. It says, and where I go, where I go, you know, and the way <laughs> and the way, you know. Now, we know that that's pretty, I mean, that, that's pretty cut and dry because we, well, those that have read beyond chapter four, I mean, verse four, know that all of a sudden Thomas said, how will we know the way? I'm telling you right now, know Jesus and you'll know the way. Know Jesus, you'll know the truth. Know Jesus, you'll have life. You'll embrace life. Now, here Jesus is putting things together <laughs> and bringing understanding to how it's going to look. Oh, Think I I I I I I talk about the WLT is is where to look. There there's people out there that don't have a clue as to where to look, and the reason don't have a clue as to where to look is because there's there's not enough people talking about Jesus. Hey, I mean there's a lot of folk talking about all kinds of different things, but they're not talking enough about Jesus. Jesus had to bring the disciples together and bring understanding that hey, look, look, <laughs> you believe God, believe also in me. I'm telling you right now, there's something about this that brings me to this point. When the last time you talked to someone about Jesus? When the last time you were out there? I mean, I know we have masks on our face, and I know we have have social distancing. But hey, listen, when it time when it comes time to really receiving what you want, you're stopping nothing to receive it. How much more should we take the word of God to whatever God is saying? I'm telling you, I've been asking God, Lord, let me be a part of something that is going to help someone else know you and, and or be a part of something that will help someone know you better because listen it it is time out for understanding god for yourself 
and not hoping others. And I'm praying that you would not allow yourself to be a uh, uh, quarantine, even when you don't have to be. I'm, I'm, and listen, I, I want want us to be be smart, but at the same time, you got a cell phone. At the same time, you have uh, uh, um, this this. <laughs> this thing called uh, uh, Facebook or Facebook, I think it is Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> use that to reach out instead of posting, uh, going to Costco. Instead of posting, going to uh, uh, Walmart. Instead of posting, I'm 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 this and I'm that. How about post what Jesus is doing? What Jesus represent? Oh, how about taking some of the scriptures that you uh, uh, have have been delivered? by that you've been set free by that that you you've been oh my goodness blessed by and use that post and see what how many ups and downs you get or what you call that thing uh likes and dislikes listen if someone dislikes the word then listen don't stop keep giving the word because let me tell you something there's a lot of us that are now saved didn't accept the word in the beginning but because we were pursued I'm a prime example because I was pursued because someone thought it was oh right to provide me with a way, the truth, and the light. I'm 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 better off today than I could ever imagine. Now listen, Jesus is 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 so. I mean, I I I I I. I I know my Bible, I'm sure if you got the right Bible, your Bible, when you see it in red, that means Jesus is speaking. And I tell you, when you start looking at what he says and how he says, it was Jesus that said, <laughs> given it shall be given. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, running over, <laughs> shall men give unto your bosom. I mean, that was Jesus. He said that out of Luke 6, 38. I mean, those, those, are, those are very, uh, oh, vital scripture. We, we... <laughs> We, we talk about those things. I mean, we, we put those things in perspective. And I was looking at in, in the scripture and I began to recognize how much we know concerning who Jesus is and what he said and how he said it. And I tell you, sometimes it's good to, to, to when, you're in your, when you're in a conversation, when Jesus said it, 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 it sometimes it's good <laughs> to say it just like that. This is what Jesus said. <laughs> I, it's, it's a beautiful thing because it's not, I mean, for me, when it, when my Savior says it, it's something that should stick out like a sore thumb. It should be something that really puts things in, in perspective. And I, and, and I was reading in Revelation, and I got really excited because I was reading, and I, I was reading about the seven churches in, 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 in Asia, and I, I, was, I, was, I was looking at, at, at those seven churches, and and Jesus was was actually uh, um, uh, addressing some of the concerns. You hear me? Jesus was addressing some of the concern that they had with God and man. And he was putting oh, he was putting some things together. Now, as I was I was reading, I said, Lord, help me with this, uh, because I, I, I went to the first church and then I went to the last church. Amen. Because, you know, the end of the matter is greater than the beginning <laughs> is what I said. But I was looking at the church at Laodicea because the church at Laodicea was the last and the worst of the seven. And here Jesus is, is he's, he's, he's really gracing himself as the amen. And I, I said, I want to read this to the, to the uh, congregation. I want to read this to the people of God. And because here he's he's really. Uh, uh, affirming he's he's, he he has a firm and unchangeable and he's talking about things within his purpose and his promises and and there's one thing about uh, uh, jesus he wants us to know he wants us to be in the know he wants us to know that we know that we know where he stands i mean come on it was jesus that said greater works that we do in his name then in the name of jesus we should know that there's power and authority there but in Revelation uh, 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 um, three, and he was talking to one of the, one of the first churches, and he said, "Here, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the church." And I, I, I as, as I read this, I just I, I, I immediately uh, grasped that not only do I have ear to hear, but I have spiritual listening 
that takes place within my life. And it's there to bring understanding to what Christ is saying to the church. And I'm telling you, as a, as a pastor, I want you to pray that I'm able to hear in my listening. You, did you hear what I said? I want you to pray that I would hear in my listening so that when I speak, I'm speaking directly according to what the word of God wants me to say. I want to be a mouthpiece of God. You should want to be a mouthpiece of God because when you know who he is, you can trust and believe what he's saying. And when you trust and believe what he's saying, then you can take that to the bank. You can hold on to that. And that thing will begin to, to cleanse you. It begins to, to, to really shake and rattle and roll all those things that should be there. I, I, I'm, I, I, was, I was reminded that there were things in my life that God <laughs> knew best. And he knew what, was, what, 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 what would help me be a better man, but be a better man of God. I mean, there's different things that, that, that I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm different in this, but I look every day to be a better man because some people won't see me as a man of God. So if they see me as a, 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 a man or a better man, then it gives and makes room for <laughs> the man of God in my life. Some people don't want to hear about Jesus. But let me tell you something. Sometimes they c- it's, it's, it's irresistible because of what you place within <laughs> the man. Oh, I'm telling you right now, a lie, it doesn't matter whether you're saved or not. A lie is a lie. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> when you start taking all those things and putting them in perspective, you have to recognize that God wants you, oh, to be th- that which he says you are and not what people will call you or listen, people are going to call you what they see. So you got to be careful of what people see and how you are careful what people see is to make sure you know what you're showing them each and every time you, 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 you present yourself, your presentation is very vital. And the church at Laodicea, again, it was the worst church and Jesus, I mean, the way he was, was, was firm with them and what things that he would place with them. Let, let's go to the scripture because I'm almost done. In verse 14, uh, and here's, 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 here's the, 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 the seventh church, the last church of the seven. He says in verse 14, he says, write this letter to the angels of the church in Laodicea. He said, this, this is the message from the one who is the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. My goodness, Jesus, I mean, he just gave his rest of me. He just gave his, I mean, come on now. He, he's, he's the amen. <laughs> the so be it. <laughs> he's the faithful. He's a true witness. And I tell you what, what I love about this is because when we accept him, we become just like him. <laughs> we are witnesses. We're the true witness i should say we're the faithful and we become the amen you know why because the word of god is the word of god and we we when we allow that to become what it is in our life then we become as christ oh truth to amen we become one the scripture even says we're heirs of god and join heirs with christ let me keep going in part b of, of, of verse Verse, uh, well, let me just read. Verse 15 says, I know all things. I know, I know all the things you do. That you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. Now, in other words, he's saying here, and I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a go, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm going to go a lot further next week, but I've got to, got to, uh, got to really bring understanding. <laughs> you are or you're not. You is or you're not. <laughs> but you got to recognize what you are. But you recognize who you, what you are and who you are because of where Jesus is in your life. It says, but since you are lukewarm, neither hard or cold, I will, s- will s- oh, spit you out of my mouth. You say I'm rich. I have everything I want. I do not need a thing, and you do not realize that you are <laughs> wretched, <laughs> miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Amen. Sound a little bit like Adam. Amen. Now, in verse 18, it says, so, so I advise you to buy gold 
from me gold that has been purified by fire. Then you will be rich. Oh. Who is Jesus? This Jesus is saying, listen, I want to advise you. I want to counsel you that I know, first of all, where you're at. This Jesus that we're talking about, where he's at in our life, he knows where we're at. And he's addressing in the church here at Laodicea. He's addressing where they're at because of who he is. And he's saying, listen, listen, I know where your, your, the condition of your heart is. I know you're miserable. I know, he says, but let me say this. He says, buy gold for me. And I'm going to talk about what it means to buy gold that's purified. See, think about this. Sometimes we are looking at our lives and we don't see how much compromise is really there. Yeah, amen. Sometimes we're looking into things <laughs> of God and, and, and we get found out or we get exposed. And instead of pursuing that exposure and turning it around, we just shut the book and we, 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 we don't want to deal with it. We decide, hey, not today. <laughs> I've already had a bad day. No, you God through the exposure he wants you because listen to me god don't god's not about embarrassment he's not about shame he's not about those things so god will bring us to that place where he exposes us but we're hey, hey listen th- listen people have relationship with god according to where <laughs> they are or what they want again there are many people that want the blessing of god but they don't want anything to do <laughs> with who he is they, they know he's <laughs> a god of harvest he's a go- god of wisdom he's a god of all these things and let me tell you something and when you recognize that for what it is you are going to accept <laughs> either what you want or what he has provided listen listen he said you buy from here and that becomes a, a purified fire. He said, then you will become rich. In other words, he's telling them they, there's, a, there's a part of you that is receiving. And there's a part of you have, 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 have become satisfied with what you receive. But let me tell you something. It's only a trap. It only takes you so far. It has a limitation. But he said, if you buy from me, if you, you, if you understand what uh, the purchasing, uh, what he has, the value is it, it, through the roof. But it brings purify. <laughs> it brings purification. And it's by fire. Oh, I, 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 I can't wait till next week because I'm going to uh, create some, some, some opportunities within in, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, where it talks about the, the purification or the, uh, the trial by fire. And I'm telling you right now, when you know who Jesus is, listen to me, there's a constant revealing there's a constant purification there's a constant bringing understanding to what it is that you need to not th- survive or thrive but to live oh he through the purification will show you the way he will bring truth that like never before he says also by by in verse verse uh, uh 18b it says also buy white garments from me so that you will not be shamed by your nakedness and on for your eyes so that you will be able to see uh come here saul remember saul had the, uh, what 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 appeared to be scales on his eyes and he couldn't see him until prayer prayer produced the falling of what appeared to be reading in acts nine what appeared to be um scales let me say this sometimes we think we all right when we are a mess listen prayer can turn a mess into a message it could reveal christ and through the revealing of christ revelation comes you take that revelation and all of a sudden you turn things around jesus says i go to prepare a place he go to prepare a place but he says i'm not just going to go and prepare a place and, and sit around and wait till you get there he said no i'm come again so that i can receive you to myself ah i love that i got to get there i'm almost there look at verse 19 It says, I correct and discipline everyone I love. So be diligent and turn your, (laughs) turn from your indifference. Oh, I just, I'm I'm building this thing because I want to talk a little bit more about it next week. Because in verse 20, 
is what I wanted to get to because it, it, it stuck out with me and I want it to stick out with you. It says, look, I stand at the door and knock. Who is this Jesus knocking? <laughs> he said, if you hear my voice and open the door, if you hear my voice <laughs> and open the door, he said, I will come in and we will share a meal together, <laughs> not as strangers. Wow. <laughs> together, but as friends. Together as friends. In other words, he says, I'm calling you friend just because you open up. Just because, listen, if you give your life to Christ, you're no longer a slave, no longer anything that you were before. I mean, he, he says, my goodness, you're no longer a slave to sin. You're no longer a slave to yourself or anything. But all of a sudden, you become a friend of God. Oh, we sing that song, I'm a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. Why? Because we recognize who God is. Through Jesus and my goodness, Jesus brings us into understanding. He says, says, I would come in and we will share a meal together as friends. He says, those who are uh, victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat with my father on his throne. Go. Oh, I'm almost done. You think about what that says. What that says is you and I are going to become what Jesus is. By accepting him. And listen to me. When you know who he is. It's hard not to. It's hard not to accept him. Unless. You can't get rid of you. Unless you can't get beyond you. Unless you are. In the way of what. <laughs> victorious life you supposed to lead. I'm telling you right now. There's something I want to go back to. There's something that Jesus said in the beginning. In John 14, he says, let not your heart be troubled. In other words, he's saying, saying, it's up to you whether your heart is troubled or not. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Why? Because if you believe God, believe also in me. In other words, he's saying, I am know the father the one you oh my goodness can believe and trust he said but my father sent me to 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 restore the relationship that was lost in other words he says you gotta know me and by knowing me i'll show you where i belong in your life i will show you where i belong in your life if you don't allow your heart to be troubled I'll show you how I will take your heart, prepare it for where I go so that you can be there also. Oh, that's <laughs> beautiful. That's something that God, I tell you what, I, I, I sometimes uh, uh, get in this weeping mode. I mean, I mean, uh, <laughs> sometimes you can see something and just start weeping. You can hear something and just start weeping. There's nothing wrong with you. <laughs> Listen, there's a there's a time of sensitivity that that goes without saying. I mean, let me tell you something. Don't you stifle that. The enemy will want you to, to turn that off. But let me tell you something. With that sensitivity, and I'm going to tell you what you should do with it. When you when you feel weeping and whatnot, listen to me. Don't fight it. Embrace it and begin to pray and ask God, Lord, what is this? What are you trying to cleanse me from? Or what are you trying to educate and, and grow me in? What is it? What, what this is? And you begin to look at some of the things that you've traversed through in the last few days or the last month or whatnot. Sometimes it's a climax of things that you've gone through and God has given you an opportunity to bring cleansing or oh, to bring, oh my goodness, a closure to things. And let me tell you something, sometimes it's just downright something that's sorrowful in the spirit that God says, I want you to intercede on behalf of and give that thing <laughs> oh, a new look, 
a new outlook. Sometimes we don't recognize that there's a part of Jesus in us that wants to be revealed and it fights to get to the top. That's why fasting is good. And we've been a fast on a long time. And I'm telling you right now, I'm asking God now for what time time frame we're going to fast uh, toward this year. Because let me tell you something. We need, need uh, oh my goodness, a time of fasting and a time of rejuvenating our spirit. Listen, the spirit. The spirit, oh my goodness, the spirit is 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 is, is, is crying out. He's crying out again. Listen, <coughs> in Revelation three, uh, six it says, "Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the church." It's time that we listen because we have ears to hear, and from a spiritual standpoint, I want you to take time daily to hear what the spirit of god is saying oh it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful thing and i'm i'm so thankful for who god is and what god can do as a result of who oh you and i have allowed him to come let's take time to pray father right now in the name of jesus but we ask god for your touch we ask god for oh for a closer revelation to who jesus is ah lord there's so much that he's said. There's so much that he has done, God. And we're constantly, Lord, being re- that's constantly being revealed to us. And I pray, God, that we won't take for granted the things that, are, that has been revealed. And we won't, Lord, we won't, won't shun the things that will cause the challenge to be even greater than what it already is. But, Lord, we'll pursue it. And we'll give you all the glory. we we'll give you all the honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you're out there and you're being challenged by life, you don't know the way (laughs) or where to look at WLT, where to look. Let me tell you something. Jesus is the way. He's the truth and he's the life. And if you want to know the way, let me give you a start. That start by giving your life to Christ because he's the way. And the truth of the matter is he'll forgive you for all of your sin. And he'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And let me tell you something. Life really begins after salvation. Life and life more abundantly. So if that's you, I want you to bow your head and pray with me. Lord, pray these words. Lord Jesus, I've acknowledged my sins. And I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. And cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe your son Jesus died on the cross for my sins. He was buried, rose on the third day with all power (laughs) in his hand. And Lord, I'm asking you now with that power to come into my heart and make me whole. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, he forgave you. Let me tell you something. When he forgave you, it wasn't conditional. Because you asked, because you repented, you are now in the bosom of God. Oh, my goodness. Think about that. <laughs> in, in, when, when, I, when, when I say it like the bosom of God, in other words, he's holding you. He's 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 carrying you. You know, the footprint says, you know, there was there was four and then there was two uh, foot, footprints on this in the sand. And the, the question was, is why it went from four to two? And he says, there was a time where I was carrying you. Listen to me. I don't want it to ever be four. <laughs> Listen, I want God to, to carry me. <laughs> so all I'm doing is looking at God walk me down. <laughs> whatever path that he has for me. Oh, I love that. Listen to me. I'm going to take time to pray for the sick. Pray for the lost. Oh, take time to, to, to witness and talk to folks about Jesus. We serve an awesome God. You know where Jesus is in his life, in our life. Listen, because you know where Jesus is in your life, Jesus, like Jesus said, he knows where <laughs> that person that in, had Laodicea, he knew where they wasn't. But he didn't leave them there. He decided to address what would keep him out. 
Ah. So now he's given them an opportunity to buy from him. <laughs> hey, oh, I can't wait to next week because I want to bring understanding to what it means to purchase. Purchase. I mean, you go to the different stores. We go to uh, 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 Avocari. We go to the, the, the to Nordstrom. We go to different places because we know <laughs> know the quality there. <laughs> Listen, how much more when we go to Jesus and purchase from Him, and by fire He says, "Amen." I just love it. What a mighty God we serve. Let's take time to pray. Close, Father. We right now ask that Lord, you would so. Uh, Lord, help us in everything that we do and everything that we say, God. Be there. Jesus, thank you for being uh, a part of our mouth. And, Lord, we want to be a mouthpiece for you. Lord, I pray right now for our president. I pray your blessing upon his life. I pray, God, for, Lord, um, total healing in his body from COVID. Lord, as well as, oh, my goodness, his family. Lord, Lania, all of them that has been affected right now in the name of Jesus, the entire White House, God, and staff. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would touch him, God. Lord, I touch, pray you touch, God, this process, Lord, this election. I pray that the people will not vote according to what folks are saying, but according to what you have placed within their hearts, God. I pray, God, that no one will be fooled by what's going on, but everybody will understand and know how and what that looks like, God, voting, oh, because, Lord, you uh, you bring the rising and the fall of leadership right now. And, Lord, I, too, pray for our service members, the men and women that serve these United States Armed Forces, Lord, and their family. Bless them, Lord. Put your hedge of protection and wall of fire around them. I pray, God, for our community, our first responders, the men and women that serve. God, I pray that you would just so move by your spirit, God, upon their families, God. Lord, I pray for law enforcement. I pray, God, for the firefighters. I pray, God, too, for South Tacoma. Bless South Tacoma. Bless, God, the things that South Tacoma need. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus for the repairing of our building, Lord. I pray, God, that that will get be uh, underway this week, God. And, Lord, I pray that, Lord, we'll soon be meeting together yet again, Lord. We love you. We say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to give a shout-out to uh, Tracy. Um, I want to give a shout out to my mom who's going to be turning 80 uh, on Monday. My goodness, I want to be like her when she when <laughs> when she grew up. And there's others out there that 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 are, are celebrating that I I don't know by uh, name, but there's others that are celebrating. We celebrate you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Have a good day. Amen. Hey.